Today, we will be discussing Canadian mass killer Albert Gue, who killed 23 people in 1949 just to avoid divorce. Joseph Albert Gue was born September 23, 1918 in Quebec, Canada. Gue married a woman named Rita in 1940. He opened a jewelry and watch repair shop in 1945, and they had their first child that same year. The happiness in their marriage was short-lived. Debts in the shop were adding up, and Albert began seeking comfort outside of the home. In 1948, he began courting a 17-year-old waitress named Marie-Ange Robite. Two or three times a week, he would visit her at her parents' house, where the teenager lived. She would introduce him as Robert Angers, hiding the fact that he was a married man. Gwe even went as far as buying her an engagement ring. Gwe's wife eventually came to learn about the affair, and she confronted the girl's parents, and Robite's parents threw her out. This forced Gwe to make arrangements for Marianne, renting her a room, and then eventually an apartment for the two of them. He then began commuting between the home he shared with his wife and child, and his mistress. This arrangement did not go well with either women. Fights in both homes were frequent. Eventually, Marie-Ange got fed up and she left Gwe. He was devastated and this was when he got the idea to get rid of his wife, Rita, for his wife was the only thing standing in the way of true happiness. Quebec was predominantly Catholic province and getting a divorce was very challenging. Rita hadn't done anything wrong in the eyes of the law, so Gwe felt that the only way to get rid of her was to manufacture an accident. He had first tried to poison her, but the man he had enlisted uh, backed out, so then he decided to go a more sinister route. He decided he would have a bomb made, and then send her to Bay Como to buy some jewels for the store, have her die in a horrific explosion, and cash in on her $10,000 life insurance policy, win back mariage, and live happily ever after. Using batteries, an alarm clock, and dynamite, a man named Jeannot Roost made the bomb. Roost had been crippled by tuberculosis, but was still skilled at mechanical work. He had often been employed by Gwe to repair things. Gwe had a woman named Marguerite, Roost Preet, Jeannot's sister, deliver the package containing the bomb to be air freighted. The plan was for the bomb to explode while the plane was over the St. Lawrence River, so the deep waters would hide the evidence. Unfortunately for Gwe, the plane was late, disrupting the carefully laid timeline and causing the package to explode while flying over land. The aircraft was a Canadian Pacific Airline Douglas DC-3. It was to fly from Montreal to Bay Comeau with a stopover in Quebec City. The aircraft carried four crew members and 19 passengers. The bomb successfully detonated, causing it to crash land in a remote area of Quebec. Had the plane been on time, and they had been flying over the St. Lawrence River, we would have never known about this murderous scheme. Fortunately for the victims, forensic analysts could be undertaken to bring justice to the victims. In addition to Gwe's wife, all four crew members four children, three Americans, and several prominent businessmen in the area all perished in the crash. While the bombing was not the first instance of sabotaging a plane flight for criminal purposes, it was the first to be solved and the story received wide news coverage both locally and abroad. In the days following the crash, a report came to police that a woman dressed in black had air freighted a package just before takeoff. Police were soon able to identify that woman as Marguerite Roost. Upon investigation, she claimed that the parcel was from a Mr. Delphi Bouchard to be delivered to a Mr. Albert Plouffe and had been entrusted to her by Gwe. She said that Gwei had employed her brother to do tasks and thought nothing of the request. Police brought Bouchard in for questioning, and he had said he had not sent out any parcels, and he also said he wouldn't need Albert Gwei to have parcels delivered. When police tried to find Albert Plouffe, 
no such man existed. While police were sifting through names of passengers to notify family members, police noticed that Rita Gray's husband had already applied for his wife's $10,000 life insurance policy to be issued. Upon further investigation, police discovered Gray had purchased the plane ticket and filed the insurance claim at the same time. In the days following, Marguerite had attempted suicide by swallowing a bottle of pain pills. She survived, and while police interrogated her at the hospital, she confessed that Gwei encouraged her to kill herself because he was going to make sure she went down for the murders. Two weeks after the crash, Albert Gwei was arrested for the murder of his wife and 22 other people. In 1949, previous to this incident, there had only been two other in-flight bombings, and this had been the largest at the time. Newspapers all over North America sent journalists to cover the trial five months later. Gwei was tried and convicted in 1950. He was sentenced to death by hanging. After his sentencing, he stated that Marguerite and Jean Roux had knowingly helped him blow up the plane. Le Soleil, a newspaper, reported that his last words were, well, at least I die famous. The Petra siblings were tried separately. Jean Roux said that he had no idea he was building a bomb to murder Gwei's wife. He had said that Gwei had asked him to build a bomb to clear trees, and then later said that Gwei needed it to do dynamite fishing. The jury was unconvinced, and he was sentenced to death by hanging. Marguerite claimed her innocence until the very end still claiming she had no idea what Gwei had intended. She was also sentenced to death. She made an appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada, but her appeal was denied. She was the last woman in Canada to be hanged. All executions took place in Montreal. Years later, an independent study was done, and the investigator concluded that there was a very high likelihood that the Petrit siblings were unknowing accomplices and they unknowingly helped Gray. We will never be sure if they were innocent or not, but we can certainly add two more people to Gray's kill count. Such a needless loss of life for all involved but I am glad he was apprehended and that justice was served for the victims.